Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to a new Let's Play series playing Ultimate General Civil War, this time from the Confederacy. So just a few days ago we wrapped up our Union Let's Play, which we went through the whole war fighting on Brigadier General Difficulty and ended up winning the war for the Union. We're now fighting for the Confederacy and attempting to form our new nation, uh, and we are also playing at Brigadier General Difficulty, which I've been told is much more difficult from the Confederate side, so that's why I'm playing from that same level. In our first video here, we fought the initial battle of the Potomac Fort uh, and set up our character. In this battle, or in this video, we're going to go ahead and uh, get our army into shape to start fighting the uh, Bull Run campaign, and we'll start with the Battle of Newport News. This was taken from a live stream from just a couple of days ago, so with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump back into that stream. I hope you sit back and enjoy and let me know your thoughts below about it. The Battle of Newport News, 15 June 1861. The Union is aggressively attempting to secure areas in Virginia. Their armies are occupying several towns before the local militia can take up arms against them. The rebellion needs your assistance to defend a small town near Newport News. The Federals are approaching from multiple directions with superior forces. You must leave a port, lead a portion of your forces, uh, of your troops, and the local militia to repel the intruders. So it looks like we start off with 3,300 men on the map uh, in 10, 10 brigades, really? A lot of small brigades. It looks like largely a lot of cavalry and artillery, actually, and some skirmishers. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and deploy our troops. That gives us about 6,800 men. I have no idea what the enemy has. So we'll take that into battle. Sir, it was very brave of you to refuse Lincoln's call to arms and join the Confederate cause. The Union is trying desperately to convince the locals not to secede and is attempting an investment of Virginia with military forces. All right. Uh, numerous Union infantry is approaching our town from three directions. Northwest. North. And northeast. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, it is vital to protect the town and show the Yankees we are not going to leave our lands undefended. Alright. The incoming Union forces are too strong. We cannot stop them, only delay them. So it's advised to deploy skirmishers in advance to north of the town to buy time for our reinforcements. To know. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Start battle. Okay, so these troops, Crocker's troops are our... Oh, God, they're both our troops. I don't want to sacrifice my own troops. Where's, where's the militia I'm supposed to be commanding? Um, I guess what we'll do is we'll put these guys kind of in the best ground we can, get them in some good cover, and let them def defend from a point of strength with the uh, being prepared to withdraw rapidly. So we'll get Crocker's Brigade into these homes. We'll go ahead and get Siegfried up on his flank. We'll go ahead and deploy some skirmishers as well off these guys a little bit further north. I don't know where these skirmishers could go. They're, they're going to be sitting ducks pretty much anywhere. Um, or, actually, maybe it's better off if we just pull back to the town altogether. Got a couple of fortifications in the town itself. I think that's what we'll do. We'll pull back to the forts. We'll leave the skirmishers in the north here to defend and uh, just kind of to, to delay the Union here. Um, I also have some cavalry here at the top of the map, so we'll go ahead and pull Stuart's troops back. Uh, they have revolving carbines. Damn, these are going to be well-armed skirmish. Actually, we might deploy them as infantry. Drop them off the horse and use them as infantry. Alright, so the butcher is pulling back. Our artillery is going to pull back as well into the town. Towns are very defensible in this game, so we're going to have some skirmishers in these woods. As well as in this house area, we're going to go ahead and pull the infantry and the cavalry back to the town uh, where we'll have kind of a strong point set up. Oh god, no, don't go after Poe here. Move your cavalry south. Okay, these skirmishers are really just a delaying force. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and move our cavalry in here. Move these skirmishers back. Cavalry is going to be a more effective delaying force, I think. Oh. 
All right, so the cavalry is in very good defensive terrain. Go ahead and dismount these guys, get them on foot. They've got Colt revolving rifles, or carbines. Hopefully it makes them a little bit better at, in, at rapidly having a large volume of fire against the enemy. You can see these things reload s incredibly quickly. But the enemy's, the enemy's manpower is going to just make them much... Well, it doesn't help if you're not in range. You're supposed to reload super fast, but you gotta actually reload. And still be in range to shoot. Alright, so our infantry is taking up positions in the town. I think these skirmishers will go out west here to kind of act as a bit of a screen. Alright. Fighting them in the forest will probably not take advantage of the weapon. You're probably right. But it's delaying them, and these are not troops that I carry over. These are militia troops. So, frankly, if they all die and I get to keep their weapons, I'm better off than if they all survive and do a really good job, but, but don't, you know, yield me any, any return there. So, again, remember, guys, I am the butcher. That's, that's my moniker, but I'm going to get them mounted up and pull them back. I don't want to lose two to one just for the sake of it. So we'll pull back a bit. Skirmishers are going to pull back to put the cavalry into these homes. I know we can't put them actually into the fort itself, but we can get some cover by being in and around the homes. And there you go. Drive those skirmishers back. Alright, well, we're still buying time. We bought over 20 minutes thus far. They're running away from us, those cowards! Alright. Go ahead and move the cavalry over here. Got enemy skirmishers kind of trying to flank us here on the right. We've got our own skirmishers deployed there. Rocker's skirmishers are going to kind of make a crossing more difficult, hopefully. And Stuart's going to go kind of guard over here in case the enemy tries to, to ford this other location. It looks like Bernie's headed toward. we got to hold for 14 more minutes till I assume reinforcements come up. Horsemen crossed the ford. Actually, they didn't even go at the ford. They went somewhere else. Right, Bernie's going to try and shoot at Crocker, it looks like, but he's exposing his rear to our cavalry. Which didn't make effective use of their weapons as they now run away. Union Brigade spotted coming from the west. That's great to know. Alright, Crocker, you're doing okay with those skirmishers here. We're gonna fire into tear into Bernie's flank. Most infamous Confederate general? Um during the war or after the war? I think during the I don't know. Force is certainly up there. Frankly, I'd rather Bernie waste a volley against this cav than against Oh, don't fucking melee.
All right, get out of their range before they can shoot. Stuart's doing an effective... I'm kind of micromanaging Stuart. All right, you did it. You did your best, General, to hold the Yankees. Our reinforcements arrived to teach them a lesson. Cavalry and supplies are on the way. Here we go. Johnston bringing up some troops. All right, so Stuart's still here. They're coming on our flank, apparently. McDowell's arriving with some troops here, so we're going to pull across the river with Stuart. B into the city. Evan's rushing up. A lot of these guys are not part of my actual force, so I'm less concerned if I act aggressively with Yule or Barlow and kind of, or Bartow, I guess, not Barlow, race them forward. Alright. Got an hour and 20 minutes still. Crocker skirmishers are going to go back and join Crocker. That's my orders. guys are coming up here. Move Evans into town. Don't run. There you go. Driving those Yankees back. Get in there, Yule. Take care of them federal devils. Get the artillery into town so they can fire canister at these guys. Johnson will get in there as well. Yule is probably too aggressive for his own good. Barto getting a nice blank volley here. I think Yule's brigade's probably done. We don't need those skirmishers on that flank. Go rejoin your brigade. But at least he's tying these two brigades up and allowing Bartow to fire right into their flank. Robinson's getting flank fire from Bartow. Meanwhile, oh god, Stuart, I completely forgot about you. Well, the enemy's chasing you. That's a diversion, I suppose. EG2 Beauregard is wounded. Hey, Strucku, 69. All right, you'll still somehow hanging in there. Cracker's getting some free volleys into these Federals who are engaged in melee. And the same for Bartow, so that's working out, I think. Meanwhile, the Federals are... trying to advance on the south of the town. Crocker's holding the north. Yeah, those Yankees gotta be... Surprised they haven't broken and run in yet. Robinson's brigade, I would think, would have would have been running by now. So we've got some very large federal brigades coming in on our left. We've got Siegfried deployed in kind of a fort position here. We've got a couple of battle batteries of artillery in support. And we've got B's infantry brigade also in support. So hopefully the town is well defended. Towns give you immaculate cover. And defensive capabilities will move Yule up. And almost, I wonder if these guys are bugged into position because they're blinking red. As if they're. or blinking white as if they're retreating. Supplies coming up. We've got some cavalry coming up the enemy's rear. Okay. Okay, so we got a musketoon. We can catch these guys between cavalry to their rear and infantry to their front, hopefully. Have the cavalry charge into them. 
infantry halt and just fire volleys at them at point-blank range. That's the objective, anyway. Evans is not one of my core units, so I'm not as worried. Oh, okay. I guess Robinson did retreat after a while. Okay, Evans is going to get charged. Whatever happened to those supplies? Yeah. Going the long right way around. Reload faster, Evans. Oh, that point blank volley's about to come. Yeah! Point blank right at Taylor. There he goes, running. Alright, Francis Bartow's wounded. He's continuing to fire into, it looks like, Wilcox's flank now. His brigade's done really well. 500 plus casualties inflicted, only 160 lost. Evans has, has taken some taken a bit of a beating as well from these two brigades. 1,800 men versus 500. But that's okay. He's taken some pressure off Siegfried. Siegfried and Crocker are the two brigades in my core units. So those are the ones that I have to replace casualties that they suffer. I don't have to replace casualties suffered by other troops. It would be interesting is if there was a guard command. I don't see one. But like guard supplies or something like that for your cavalry, that would be useful. I think. Alright, so we have some infantry harassing us. Actually, one of these batteries is mine too. I think it's Pelman's. Alright. Alright, so another federal brigade is sent running. can see here their flag disappeared, which means they're retreating, and they will not be able to rally. Alright, you'll get in there and melee with them before they get in contact with Siegfried. I know you're outnumbered, but again, I really don't care about I don't care about you. Enemy cavalry! We don't really have a left flank, really. We're completely absorbed by our right. Rear flank? Where's he getting hit from? Alright, 14 more minutes. We gotta hang on. I think our, cav or our artillery can hold off these skirmishers here. That's my hope. Evans will advance up here. Jenner, go ahead and deal with this enemy. Enemy skirmishers over here, or enemy cavalry. I don't really care which. We just got to hold on for a few more minutes, guys. Just a few more minutes. All right, and our cavalry at least distracted them. Evans, you go ahead up here, charge in there, and kind of form our, our rear there. Yule, you have done spectacular work. Siegfried and Crocker, 300 losses, 100, so about 500 men killed on our side, plus about 30 of our artillerymen, two guns. Okay, I think we're almost, I'm assuming victory is when these five minutes are up, I don't know if it will take longer, but we'll find out. Thomas, this is the Battle of Newport News, it is the second battle in uh, the Confederate campaign. So two minutes. Come on, Yule, my boy. Fire your fire Z guns. Alright, so that cavalry routed. Okay. Alright, victory in Newport News. Confederates or Union had about 8,200 infantry, 460 cavalry, 27 guns. They lost. No guns, but they did lose 3,500 infantry and 110 cavalry. We lost about less than half that. We did lose a few guns. 
But in terms of goods, well, actually, let's see here. Uh, John Pelham was deceased. Uh, Daryl Siegfried was promoted. And Bartow was wounded. Beauregard was wounded. Okay. Goods seized. We rescued some Coke brother, or Cook Brother weapons, which were not one of our core units. We rescued some 1842s as well as captured some. Uh, we also rescued our field guns, which were lost, and captured or rescued some Colts, uh, some Sharps, and some Colts, which we rescued. So there's two different Colts. This one, I believe, one of them is the Revolver, one of them is the Carbine. Uh, but overall, I think a successful victory. We are now 2-0 as the Confederacy, and we are almost ready for the uh, Battle of Bull Run. Yes, it is uh, Brigadier General uh, difficulty. So we got 4,300 reinforcements here, $60,000 to play with. We can go ahead and max Siegfried out at 1,500 men. Again, we're going to use rookies because everybody's so inexperienced. It doesn't really make much of a difference here at this point. Um, and we can also do the same for Crocker. A little bit more of an impact for him, it feels like, but at the end of the day, not much. Uh, we've still got that one star, which we've gotten them to, so we can give them discipline training, which is kind of my favorite to go with over endurance. Uh, endurance gives them more stamina, efficiency, and speed, but I'm less concerned about stamina and, and speed, especially given that we're going to be on the defensive a lot here early in the, in the war. Uh, discipline training gives you better morale and efficiency. I think that's worth more. Um, likewise, we're going to go ahead and, well, Siegfried's already got his trait. Uh, Lynch uh, lost a couple of guns in the last battle. We got three that we captured. We can go ahead with rookie reinforcements. We'll go ahead and get the two guns we rescued, the one we captured, and we'll add a 12th gun as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and have a 12-gun battery here. He's a little bit low in rank, so we probably can't really afford to make this any larger. He's already suffering a little bit of a penalty. So a 12-gun battery will be sufficient. Uh, if we go in here to the career mode, you can see here that we have maximum strength of three units in a brigade, maximum of two divisions. If we were to increase army organization to two, then we would actually, what would we open up here? Uh, next level would give us four brigades per division, so it would actually allow us to have an extra brigade in each division. How many divisions can we bring to Bull Run, or how many brigades can we bring to Bull Run? Let me check. Um, let's see here. We can bring a maximum of four brigades. So we can add one. So I think that army organization will really be beneficial because it'll allow us to bring the maximum number of brigades possible rather than going into this fight under strength. So we're going to use that uh, career point that we just earned toward army organization so we can make sure we go into bull run with the right number of troops. We can't go with two divisions, but we can go with a larger first division. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and make it an infantry brigade. We'll make it 1,500 men. I believe we'll go with the 1842 Springfields because we've got almost enough to equip our troops with that. And uh, do we want to make it a major? I think he's the only one we have in reserve. So we'll go ahead and make it a major. And there you go. So we've still got some reinforcements, 2,300 men that we haven't used yet, but there's not really any point to using them. I think we'll kind of wait and see because we can't bring them to this battle and bringing them to the Battle of Shiloh or the next campaign might be nice, but there's no reason to, to rush and do it immediately. Meanwhile, we do have a bit of money sitting around, so we could use that toward maybe giving some of our troops better guns. Uh, let's take a look here. Do we have any that we've captured? I think we have. We have some 1855s. Uh, we have, we don't have 1,500 of them. We've only got a few hundred. Doesn't look like we have any guns except for maybe the Mississippis, Mississippi rifles, which we do would bring us, uh, we've got enough of those to equip these guys with rifles. Drops their melee a bit, increases their efficiency, and decreases their reload, so it's got a lot better range. But I don't know if it matters here in this particular, um, in this particular fight or not. It's a, it's a decent increase in terms of their efficiency. Um, but I'm just not sure it's worth it. We could actually... We've got enough money, I think, to equip two of our units with those rifles. Um, but let's hold off on that, because we may want that, that money to equip new troops in the next battle. We're going to go ahead and increase our supply. Uh, we'll increase it... Since we've got the money, we'll increase it to around 12,000, which should be... Or maybe we'll make it 15,000, which should be sufficient for a while, especially with this small force that we have. And obviously there's the risk if they get captured that you lose it all, so I don't want to spend all of our money on maxing out the supply of the core 
Uh, but that's something we'll need to build up over time. Um, armory, we could sell off those Springfields for more money, but there's really no reason to do that. Same for the Colts and Sharps or all of these weapons that we've captured. But frankly, we can't equip any of them right now anyway, so we're just going to kind of keep it as is. I'm going to go ahead and save... And here we go. Okay. Um, what is the name of the army I'm in command of? Um, I guess I haven't named it. Can you name your army? I don't think you can name your army. I'm T.H. Butcher, and I'm commanding the first core of the Confederate army. We could give it a name, but I haven't thought of that yet. Uh, meanwhile, here, we're going to be ready for the Battle of Bull Run in just a moment. We gain 10 prestige uh, if, we, um, if, we, if we win. Janice, I will return to Cold Waters. Yes, I've been meaning to do it, but um, I just haven't had the time to jump in. I only have a couple of hours as well uh, so for tonight, but I will be returning to Cold Waters. Fear not. Um, I just, it, just not tonight. And I'm out of beers, beer, guys, so I'm going to have to run to the fridge. I will be right back in maybe a minute or so, and then we will start the Battle of Bull Run. All right, everybody, we have done it. We've won the Battle of Newport News. We won the original battle to start the campaign, the Battle of Potomac Fort. And now we are on to the first of the grand battles, the Battle of Bull Run. With that being said, we will address that fight in the next video. I hope you guys are enjoying the start to this new Confederate Let's Play, looking at Ultimate General Civil War. This was part two. Next time around, we'll have part three and the Battle of Bull Run. Thanks for tuning in once again, guys. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.